but some of you guys came up here to get prayed for because of a mindset that you had that was that was was negative because of a stronghold that's that you've allowed into your thinking and allowed into how you process life. Um, can, can I tell you, I don't like the term process when it comes to us as believers. I like the term progress. So, so what are you doing? You're processing things? No, I'm, I'm finding that place of progress. In 2 Corinthians 10.3, Paul writes and says, though we walk in the flesh, we don't war according to the flesh. That, that fellow that was up here that I, I singled out and picked on for a few minutes, that that I, I wasn't talking to his flesh, I was talking to his spirit that, that was alive unto God on the inside of him. And, and, and that's where we have to get. I believe tonight God's going to speak clearly to you, definitively to you, directly to you. It's going to, and you're going to hear his voice. Now, how you interpret it, might, you might miss it. And I believe, I believe most Christians miss, miss it because it's like, wait a second, what, what, what does that voice sound like? Man, I'm telling you, you're going you're gonna to know it because we're his sheep and we hear his voice and another voice we don't follow. But though we, though we for the weapons of our warfare and carnal, so though we, though we war or we walk in the flesh, we don't war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare aren't carnal, are, are worldly, are natural, but mighty in God for the pulling down strongholds. Circle that word mighty or write mighty in your notes. And I encourage you to take notes in these kind of, these kind of meetings so that you begin to hear, hear from God as you look at your notes. But that word mighty is similar to the word you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you'll be my witnesses, Acts 1.8, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. See, that word power is the word dunamis. This is a form of that word dunamis. It's mighty unto God. It's powerful unto God. It's explosive. It's dunamis unto God. It's, it's explosive unto God. And then, and then Paul writes, it says in verse 5, he said, casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into the captivity to the obedience of Christ. Every thought. Listen, your battle, what you're dealing with right now, everything is started with a thought. Everything, everything in your life, everything starts with a thought. And then that, that thought begins to resonate in us and it, it sinks into our hearts and out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. You know, you, know, you, you it, it's funny because there, there'll be, you, might, you might cuss. We, I, we had an intern one time. Um, I think she's in the room right now, so... Maybe it'll be embarrassing with my, uh, without me even saying her name. But she, she was in, in the gauntlet at the internship. I don't remember if any, any of you guys were there. But she, Johnny, you were there? And out of her mouth, she just blurted the F-bomb. It came out of her mouth. She's like, and, and I'm telling you, she was like pure and innocent. And she's like, and, and, and the F-word came out of her mouth. And, and it wasn't fart, okay? But... <laughs> Taylor was a little boy, and he came up to me and said, Dad, man, Johnny's got a potty mouth, man. He talks so bad. I'm like, really, Johnny does? Yeah, terrible, terrible. I said, like, what kind of things do you say? Oh, I can't say it. I said, well, what, what, what kind of words? He said, and he uses the F word. I'm like, oh, no. Taylor's like six. I'm thinking, dear God, he can't be exposed to this at six years old. I'm not ready for this. He's our first and you know, I'm down for whatever, but I'm not ready for that. And he goes, F word this and F word that, F word, F word, F word. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. Oh, I'm, it's breaking my heart. I said, son, you know, you can't, you hold oh, no, I'll never use that word. I bet he did now that I think about it. You know, he went through a little rebellion patch, but, um, He's a man of God now, though. Um, yeah, F word this, F word that. I, I'm like, okay, F word, that's bad. You can't ever use it. No, I'll never use that word. I said, just between me and you, you're not going to say it to anybody else. Don't say it to where the girls can hear it or anything. But um, I want you to tell me what that word is. No, Dad, I can't. That, that word is bad. I said, I know. I'm aware of that word. 
but I need to hear, I need to hear, I want you to know how bad that word is. Can you just tell me? I'm not kidding you. Six years old, he goes like this. Fart. I was like, yes, there is a God. What was I talking about? Oh, the intern. She blurted out the real F word. And then she said, I don't know where that came from. I've never used that word before. But the Bible says out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. I'm just saying it might have been in there for a long time. But, <laughs> but see, but we've got to bring every thought into the captivity of Christ. The next verse says something interesting. And being ready to punish. Underline that word punish. Be ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. See, you being obedient to God, it punishes any bit of disobedience that's operative in your life. And let me tell you, that's the key. In, in your notes, right, obedience beats Trump's disobedience. Any disobedience you've had in your life and you feel guilty, you feel shame, just beginning a, a route of obedience, you know what it does? It punishes that, that disobedience. See, the weapons of the warfare we have, they're weapons to demolish mental strongholds. That's what the weapons God gives us do. It, it punishes it, the, the mental and, and, and emotional lies and deception the enemy uses. See, I'll tell you how the enemy's going to attack you. He's going to attack you mentally and emotionally. Because really, honestly, no weapon formed against you will prosper. You'll walk through the, through the water. You'll walk through the fire. You won't be consumed. You won't be, you won't be singed. So, it's, so you're thinking, man, this is a physical attack. It's not. It's a mental. It's an emotional attack that becomes a spiritual attack in your life. See, the, the weapons that we use, they demolish mental strongholds, emotional strongholds. And, and we have to look at that. We have to understand that, that, that the, the idea comes and the, 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 the flip side of that for me that the lies that the enemy uses aren't real. They just seem to be real. They feel like they're real. They, they might even be factual, but let me help you. Facts change. The facts for a lot of people is you, you came up here tonight and you, you were sick, but the truth is you're healed. So whose report are you going to believe? You're going to believe the factual report or the report of the Lord, which is the truth. In Acts 10.38, the Bible says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, we expect that, and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for, the God, for God was with him. Press pause right now. Devil here is not a person. Devil here is not an object. It's not Lucifer. Devil here is a job description. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the lies and deception of the enemy, the job description of the enemy. See, and, and what, what, what the devil is here is, is one who repetitiously strikes to bring ruin. See, the devil just doesn't say, oh, you're going to fail. The devil just doesn't say, oh, your kid's not going to amount to anything. He's not just going to say that and walk off. He's going to relentlessly. The Bible says the storm's going to hit your house, and it's going to vehemently beat against that house. But everything's determined by the foundation that your life's laid on. Everything's determined by the word that you're standing on in your life. How many guys are married? What, what word are you standing on for your marriage? How many guys have children? What word are you standing on regarding your children? How many guys have business? 
What word are you standing on for your business? How many guys have a bank account? What word are you standing on regarding your bank account? How many guys have debt? What word are you standing on regarding that debt? Listen, it's not just going to serendipitously just, just evaporate out of your house. God's not going to send a lightning bolt from heaven and scorch your pile of bills and burn them up. No. You know what he's, what, what he's done? He's given us the authority to speak to that mountain. And for a lot of, for a lot of y'all, that's debt. See, the enemy strikes continually to ensnare us and to ruin us. It's not just, it's not just a thought. It's a series of thoughts. It's, 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 it's things that come into your mind, and then it becomes a mindset. You know, it's, it's, it's like an athlete that goes, in, goes into a slump. Man, I'm, man I, watched, I watched Sean pole vault at ORU. And his coach came in and said, how high can you go? He said, put it at 17 feet. I'm looking up there. I'm thinking, oh, dear God. And it's funny because the coach's son, a cocky little athlete, was standing there. He was little at the time. He looked at me and goes, 17 feet. You know what? Sean came down that runway, stuck that pole in that pit, launched himself over and pole vaulted 17 feet. Man, I'll tell you what, there had to be, I, I might have had some doubt. <laughs> there, there could have been some doubt to keep him from even trying. And I'll tell you, when it comes to the weapons of our warfare, this is so, this, the guarantee of God's brilliance in your life is so strong the only way you lose is by not trying. Man, I, 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 coached, I coached high school kids for a long time, and it's like they'd come over to the sideline. I'd be like, are you, are you trying? I think with a little bit of effort, we could win. But you know what? I think the church is full of people that they're not really trying. They become forgetful hearers. See, the enemy's going to strike continuously. He's going to strike to ensnare you, to get you into bondage, to, have, to create a strong, build a stronghold in your mind, and to ruin you. See, whatever you put your trust in is what you empower. Whatever you put your trust in is going to be what you really believe. And you've got to, you've got to determine in your heart, you've got to look at your life, you've got to say, wait a second. I've got to believe the report of the Lord. How are you going to if you don't know what it is? What does God's word say about your marriage? What does God's word say about your children? What does God's word say about your health? What does God's word say about your finances? What does God's word say about your business? What does God's God's word say about your future? You know what the Bible says? Good and not evil. To give you a massive hope that will never disappoint. But you're like, man, my life has just been one big disappointment. If we could, listen, if we could just shake any semblance of a victim mentality off people's lives, I'm telling you, Tulsa will never be the same. See, all the devil knows, let me tell you, the devil can't read your mind. The devil can't see your future. God does. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. The devil's not. See, all the devil knows is that God wants to use you supernaturally. Now listen, if five people in this room caught that, five people, what kind of difference would be made in the world we live in? See, but the devil, he knows God wants to use you. He knows God has availed wonder-working, miraculous power where there's salvation on your lips and there's healing in your hands. So everything he does is to turn you into his puppet so that that doesn't happen. So really, honestly, if you're not operating in the miraculous in your life, I'm telling you, just look up above you. There's a, there, there's a demonic hand 
that's, that's controlling the strings to your life? Who's controlling your education? Who's controlling your marital life? Who's controlling your financial life? Who's controlling your future? Who's controlling your, your children? Man, so many parents are so passive and beta about raising their kids. Dads, you're the alpha in your home. I don't care if you hate alpha personalities. You've got to be the alpha in your home. Your kids' lives depend upon it. You're the gatekeeper of your home. Man, if something's, if something's trying to get into your home, you're the one that stops it. I don't, I'm not laying on the couch and somebody rings the doorbell and says, hey, Sandy, go get the door. I'm going to go get the door. I don't, you have no idea who's trying to get in your door. See, you've got to look at this. You've got to understand that alpha side of you where you're the head and not the tail, above only and never beneath, has got to rise up. Wake up and start giving the effort. Whoever controls your head controls your life. What, what do they say? It's, it's like a computer. It's garbage in, garbage out, or I don't remember what they used to say. But that's what it is. Whatever you're, whatever you're soaking on, and you know what? Then you begin to meditate on it. Start meditating on politics. Start meditating on business. Start meditating on the future of the dollar. I don't see the dollar in the word. You know what I see? All my needs met according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You know what I see? God daily loads me with benefits. You know, if you guys sit up and pay attention, I'm going to preach Psalm 103 Sunday. And let me tell you something. This place is going to explode. I'm telling you, there's the spiritual dynamics that are in that simple chapter. Go read it. I dare you to read it and, not, and it not be explosive on the inside of you. Whoever controls your head controls your life. See, that's why, what did Paul say? He said, you've got to put on the whole armor of God. Why? So you can stand against the wiles of the evil one. And, and then he says this, stand, and, and that you stand. And then, he, and then he repeated, he said, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. Man, you know what you're doing? You're sensing truth around your waist, that you gird your waist with truth. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness, Man, it, it, police officers and military people use armored vests. And, well, this vest, let me tell you something. This vest guards your righteousness. And let me tell you what that, what, what that righteousness is. It's God's right hand. So now God has put his right hand on your chest. Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So now everywhere the sole of your foot lands, you possess it. What possesses it? Peace. What's a synonym of, what's a synonym of peace? Huh? What's a synonym of peace? Prosperity. Man, so now your feet are shod with the preparation of what? Prosperity. He's making my way prosperous. I'll tell you what, this is too good. We do not deserve this, so I'm thankful for Jesus. Anybody with me on that? Verse 16, above all, above all, more important than anything, taking the shield of faith, which is able to quench all the fiery darts of the evil one, the wicked one. Take the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. What's that helmet protecting? Your head. The helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplications in the Spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. See, can I tell you what our responsibility is? To pray for everybody. Everybody. For the weapons of our warfare are carnal, but mighty, dynamic unto God for the pulling down of strongholds. 
man, if I were you, what I'd do, mighty superhuman power. Pulling down means dismantle, demolish, destroy strongholds. John wrote this in 1 John 3, 8. He said, he who sins is of the devil. He who sins has been duped by the job description of the evil one. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of Man was manifested, excuse me, that the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of that job description. What kind of lie, what kind of deception is keeping you in bondage and in torment, keeping you from availing? You got to cast down all the arguments and high things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into the captivity of, to the obedience of Christ. I'll tell you, go back through these notes. Bum, if you didn't take notes, bum the notes off somebody else like you did in high school. If you're one of the A students in here and you took notes, I'd be selling those notes to people like you did in high school. But listen, we can't do the purpose of my life is to help direct you to your purpose. That's it. What you do with it is determined by your effort. So essentially, the fulfillment of my life, the fulfillment of Pastor Sandy's life is for you to fulfill your purpose. You can't do that with a stronghold in your life. You can't do that when you've got an enemy that's trying to chip away at you and he's just relentless like a dadgum woodpecker just chipping at you. I remember when I was a kid, I was a freshman in high school, there was a woodpecker pecking on the side of our house. Brand new house. My mom and dad had it built in Warrington. Nice house at that time. But I went back afterwards, a few years ago, I preached there and I went back and I thought, dear God, that house really isn't as big as I remember. But I remember we had a woodpecker pecking at the side of the house and my dad went and got a shotgun he loaded it in the family room he was gonna he walked over to the sliding glass door went to open the sliding glass door and I guess he tripped the trigger on that shotgun but it blew that sliding glass door out I'm sitting there and I'm like oh my gosh he turned to me and he said son that woodpecker's going to die now. <laughs> he went out and shot that woodpecker. Blew a lot of siding off the house. <laughs> Way more damage than that woodpecker was going to make. But you know what? I remember that story, and I was proud of my dad. It was fun. That's what you've got to do with that stronghold that's tried to keep you from being everything God's called you to be. Do you want to fulfill God's purpose in your life? Do you want to? You got to just try. God's made you to do this. And Jesus came to earth. He was manifest on the earth to defeat the power of darkness. That's the only thing that can keep you from fulfilling God's purpose is darkness. God, we love you and we praise you. We thank you for who you are and what you're about. God, I thank you for this incredible group of people. God, I thank you for the brilliance of your word. God, I thank you that our lives will never be the same because your word is working in us. Say this with me, will you? Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your promise. All of your promises, God, are yes and amen. God, show me any stronghold that has developed in my life. And God, I thank you that your word, by your spirit that occupies my life, will destroy the works of the evil one. God, I thank you for it and I praise you for it. I'm saved, I'm healed, 
I'm delivered, I'm set free, I am armed and forewarned with your word by your spirit. All I do is win. I'm winning at home, I'm winning in the field, I'm winning on the street, I'm winning in the office. God, everything I put my hand to prospers and no weapon formed against me ever will. God, thank you so much for Psalm 103 that's gonna be preached into my life on Sunday and explosive dynamic results are gonna happen from it. Those results are gonna be elevation. Those results are gonna be blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. As you go, preach. Thank you so much for tuning in to Guts Church YouTube channel. I'm Pastor Chano Trevino, the assistant pastor here at Guts Church. And on behalf of our leadership team, our staff, our church, it's our hope that this message met you right where you are. If it did, I bet there's someone you know who could use the encouragement of this message in their life. And you sharing it with them can make all the difference. The mission of Guts Church is to help people win. And you can be a part of that simply by sharing, or better yet, inviting someone to tune into Guts Church online with you every week. Take that next step to be a part of what God is doing right now in this moment in time by being committed to showing up, placing a premium on God's word, and receiving all that God has for you. You can share this message, gather your friends for services, make it a priority to make this the place you want to be. God has so much for you. I truly believe that. We love you. We're praying for you. Can't wait to see you soon.